American hospitals charge around twenty to thirty thousand dollars for a cesarean section. The cost of a normal birth is more like eight to ten thousand uh, dollars. In other words, when I say normal, I have to qualify that because in the U.S. we really don't have. I have to repeat, we do not have normal physiological birth hardly at all in my country. Maybe three to four percent of births. If you take three percent of normal hospital births and one percent of home births and birth center births, you get four percent of all births in my country are normal. So when I say normal, what I really mean is vaginal, right? You can have a vaginal birth in the U.S. for around eight to ten thousand dollars in the hospital, and again, a cesarean for twenty to thirty. <clears throat> so obstetricians, of course, don't take away all that money for themselves, but they do make around three to four times more for a cesarean than they do for a vaginal delivery. So of course, and it's not just that they make more for the cesarean; it's that it takes them so much less time. You can have that baby out and have the mother sewed up in twenty minutes. Uh, and, uh, and, and, but if it's a vaginal, if it's a vaginal birth, you have to be coming in and out, checking on her, waiting around in the hospital for her to give birth. Would you please get this show on the road? Let's hurry up and move it along, you know? So obstetricians have every reason to do cesareans. One, they're de-skilled and they don't know what else to do for any complication that, <clears throat> that normally they would have had to use vacuum forceps or do an external version or catch a breech baby. They don't know how to do any of that, so they just jump to the cesarean. So that's one, they don't know better. Number two, or they don't know how to do it otherwise because <clears throat> they're not taught anymore. And number two, <clears throat> uh, time, it saves so much time, convenience, power. When an obstetrician performs a cesarean, he or she feels the power of life in their hands. They deliver the baby, quite literally. They cut the mother open <clears throat> and they reach in and they pull the baby out. And I've interviewed so many of them and they get this little spark in their eyes when they talk about how cool it is to pull a baby up out of the womb and know that you delivered that baby. You brought it into the world. <clears throat> you hopefully saved its life. Although most cesareans are not life-saving, they're unnecessary. <clears throat> WHO says we should not have a cesarean rate higher than 15, and now they're, they're like 15 to 20, you know? I mean, I have to say, we all in the birth world used to think that any cesarean rate below, <clears throat> uh, above 15% was terrible. Now we think any cesarean rate below 25% is great, you know, because it's gotten so much higher in so many countries of the world. So we, you know if you're hanging out around 22%, like the UK is, that they're trying. You know, Scandinavian countries have cesarean rates in the high teens or low 20s. That means they're trying really hard not to let it go higher. Once you get your cesarean rate above 25%, it becomes completely tautological and you cannot, it's almost impossible to bring it back down again because you've lost VBACs already. We've complete, pretty much completely lost VBACs in my country because of a series of most unfortunate events that happened in the early 2000s. <clears throat> so no VBACs, doctors don't know how to do breaches. And again, they jump to cesarean for every little thing. <clears throat> so you get those three factors in play and you get this escalating rise in cesareans. And for the, you have a cesarean for the first kid, you're now just going to be for the second kid as well. And you have a 34% cesarean rate. So more and more primates are having cesareans, meaning more and more multi, multips are going to have cesareans. You know, plus doctors don't not knowing how to do anything else. It just goes, it just escalates from there and it becomes almost impossible to stop it and bring it back down. So it's key for any country who's got a cesarean rate under 25% to work very hard to keep it there. I mean, we kept our cesarean rate in the U.S. at under 25% from 1980 until <clears throat> 2004, approximately. And that had a lot to do with the huge effort that childbirth activists put into yelling and screaming at any percentage point rise in the cesarean. So we'd go up to 23% or <clears throat> we'd go up to 24% and then we'd yell and scream and it'd go back down to 21%. And it went like that all through the 90s, but it never got above 25%. And then we'd yell and scream and it would go back down. So we literally maintained it that low for that long a time. <clears throat> And then in uh, around 2005, um, this uh, study was published showing, <clears throat> well, ACOG, the American College of OBGYN, came out with this, uh, a statement saying that they thought that elective cesareans were ethical, so it was okay to do cesareans for, um, if, for women who just wanted them and didn't want to have to go through labor because they just didn't want to. You know, <clears throat> so that happened. And then a couple of studies came out that got very misinterpreted. and. Um, and then a study came out about um, <clears throat> that, it sh that it was um, saying that there was a much greater risk of uterine rupture with VBAC. And <clears throat> that was a very unfortunate study. That was Mona Leiden Rochelle's study. And what her study actually showed, and this was around 2005, what her study actually showed 
was that the more Pitocin you use during a VBAC, the greater your chance of uterine rupture. So the logical conclusion would be don't use Pitocin with a VBAC. Hello? But doctors in my country are so used to using Pitocin, they literally do not know how to do births without inducing and augmenting with Pitocin. So they couldn't imagine not doing births with Pitocin because to them birth equals Pitocin induction and augmentation. So the conclusion that they reached was don't do VBACs anymore, except in, prime, it's except in high level tertiary care hospitals with 24 seven anesthesiology on call. <clears throat> because of course we're gonna use Pitocin, so of course the risk of uterine rupture is gonna be higher, you know? So that's where we started, that's really those two things. The ACOG statement saying that it was ethical to do elective caesareans. <clears throat> the um, the Monolide Rochelle study, which doctors interpreted to mean you should never do, uh, the, the VBACs lead to higher risk of uterine rupture. <clears throat> and and the um, there was one other thing. Um, Oh, and the loss of breach deliveries, the, the fear, the high fear of breach. <clears throat> All of those things just, made the, from then on, the cesarean weight from 25 up to the current 34%, and it's rising at a percentage point a year. So unlikely that we'll be able to bring it back down. Unless somebody figures out that, gee whiz, we could do VBACs without Pitocin, and guess what, they'd be a whole lot safer. And if somebody would figure that out, then we might be able to start bringing it down again. With the breach issue, <clears throat> um, there are researchers all over the world, in Europe especially, and other places who are working very hard on bringing that vaginal be breach. Because now we have some large scale trials showing that in fact, with skilled hands, in skilled care, with people who know how to attend a breach, vaginal breach can be a very successful and safe mode of delivery. <clears throat> but it's scary for practitioners. You have to know what to do. You have to know how to let the baby's butt come out, and then you have to know how to put your fingers in and flex, pull the neck down like this, or flex the head here. You have to keep the head like that. <clears throat> and it's it's only 3% of deliveries, but 3% of millions of births is a lot of births, you know? So um, there are some practitioners that are trying to teach others to re help them reskill themselves in vaginal breach. And so there's a slight movement toward that around the world. So it's not impossible to bring cesarean rates down, but you, again, you'd have to have people who are losing their fear of birth and developing confidence, and people who truly understand the scientific evidence. If a study shows that rates of uterine rupture are higher when you use Pitocin in a VBAC, then make the logical conclusion and don't use Pitocin for a VBAC. Try patients instead. <laughs>